Okay, uh, next we have Siobhan Bell. Uh, Siobhan answered the call for submissions, um, and she recently took uh, my mother lost writing workshop that was specifically targeted for motherless daughters. Um, so I've, I've really enjoyed getting to know her. Uh, this is her bio. Uh, Siobhan Bell is a freelance writer and digital content producer who was raised in the Bronx and currently lives in Harlem with her cat, Snickers. She has a passion for listening to people's stories and sharing spaces with communities that amplify marginalized voices. When she's not overthinking about what it means to be a human, she enjoys crafting, trying new recipes, practicing her downward facing dog, and complaining about growing up. Let's give it up for Siobhan. I hate adulting. That's not good. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <clears throat> Pause, rewind, stop, play. Pause, rewind, stop, play. I was in the middle of giving meticulous orders to my grandmother's VCR, which was covered in a blanket of dust. Right hand on right hip, I furrowed my eyebrows. There were men in green football uniforms tackling each other on the 32-inch screen in front of me, although the VHS tape inside the VCR is clearly labeled Christmas 1995. It's written in blue ink on a white address label in my mom's handwriting. And I know it's my mom's handwriting because of the way she wrote the number five and how it always looked like an S. My fist met the VCR, but I wanted nothing more than my hand to instead be a magic wand. My grandmother just accidentally recorded over one of only two tapes I owned of my late mother. I felt sick to my stomach, like the proof I had that my mom was once here was suddenly ripped away from me. Hot tears blinded me and there was a huge lump gripping my throat, threatening to betray my stoic face, but all I could do was curse myself for not transferring my tape to DVD or better yet the cloud, which I was always meaning to get around to one day. There was no use in dwelling on something I couldn't change, but I was suddenly overcome with so much jealousy over all the baby photos and videos on social media that I scrolled through and double tapped on a daily basis. At least they would have their precious childhood memories forever. Fortunately, it took me all of five minutes to come to my senses. I knew I didn't need a tape to remind me how hardworking my single mother was and how she always made the holidays amazing. Even though she forgot to eat the slightly burnt and overly thick oatmeal cookies I left out for Santa that one night and I started to seriously doubt his existence. We didn't have the best tree. It was pretty awful and sparse, but she still made sure to decorate it every year with gold garland, white glass ornaments, and a huge blinking star on top. I was an only child, so naturally I was the pity meal spoiled, and one of the best things about Christmas was not sharing my toys. <laughs> I'll never forget the box of 96 Crayola crayons that came with the built-in sharpener and such original colors like Tickle Me Pink, Granny Smith Apple, and what easily became my favorite shade of orange, macaroni and cheese. With my eyes closed, I can almost picture my pink vanity set adorned with bright lights all around the mirror and hidden drawers to hold my most prized possession root beer flavored lip smacker gloss, classic 90s girl essentials. Plus, she'd always let me play with her blue mood lipstick that changed into a raspberry shade once applied to the lips. It was magical. Of course, there was also that baby alive doll with the mechanical mouth that pooped its diaper when fed from the included food packets. And it was at that point that I mentally scratched pediatrician from my list of careers to choose from as an adult, but still, I loved it. Easy bake ovens, jewelry making kits, Barbie dolls portrayed with every occupation imaginable. I was granted all these things and more, even though when it came to her special day, Mother's Day, I made a popsicle stick jewelry box or a pasta picture frame every single year. And each time I gave it to her, she'd act like she never saw it coming and would appreciate the effort I put into gluing a hundred sticks together or choosing the perfectly cold rotini. So although that lost tape might help jog my memory, I keep my mother's spirit alive in me, where it will always be burning bright. And if I listen closely, I can still hear her laugh in my heart. I choose to cook the pasta I have in my own cupboards now, but nonetheless, happy Mother's Day, Mom. Thank you.